Hello there. Uh, welcome back to financial account of six. Uh, in this video, we want to look uh, at a question on the framework, and we are going to answer our question uh, 2.3. So uh, this is our question uh, 2.3. So our uh, uh, question reads, uh, classified the following items per function. Uh, we're going to raise the distribution cost, finance cost, administrative cost. And then the write the function as a heading and then classify the items under them. So uh, the items that are being referred to are the ones that are, we are given here at 2.3.1 that we need to classify whether it's a revenue, distribution cost, finance cost, administrative cost. So uh, uh, by revenue, we are saying uh, that's when uh, a business receives money. Uh, so revenue uh, uh, becomes when uh, the business or the company is receiving money. So uh, for example, sales, when, you, uh, when we uh, make our sales, we are able to receive uh, uh, money and we call that uh, revenue. We anticipate that we are going to uh, receive money in the form of uh, if uh, they are credits or uh, sales. But uh, the basic uh, thing is that we are going to uh, receive money. So um, we also have a uh, distribution cost here. So distribution cost, these are costs related to the transport, uh, transport or transport of goods uh, from uh, the manufacturer to the end user. They might uh, include, uh, we, we have transport uh, fees also be part of our uh, distribution cost, even toll fees, uh, even where else also can be classified under distribution cost. So uh, basically, uh, when we are considering costs that are incurred when we transport goods uh, from uh, the manufacturer to the end user, or the uh, 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 the costs that we incur during the process of the provision of our uh, services. So we call it a uh, distribution uh, cost. Then uh, we also have uh, finance costs. Uh, finance costs now, uh, these are costs uh, or expenses associated with the borrowing of funds. Or financing obligations. So when we are, when we are borrowing borrow money, the cost that we care to borrow that money in the form of interest uh, is the finance cost. We have got interest on loan, uh, interest on mortgages, uh, also uh, even interest on overdraft also is a finance cost. Then lastly, we have got administrative uh, costs. So on administrative costs, I would say that these are called uh, these are also called the overhead cost or fixed cost. Uh, they are costs uh, that companies are in care to maintain daily operations. Uh, of the business. Uh, usually, uh, we can have rent as part of our administrative costs. Uh, we can have our utility costs also can be part of uh, our administrative costs. Even insurance also is part of our administrative costs. So um, we are going to uh, class go each item by item and try to classify it according to the headings that we are given here. So uh, the first one that we have is sales. Obviously, sales is under revenue because we are saying when we sell, we are going to receive money and uh, it's part of revenue. So we can just uh, classify it uh, under our revenue. So uh, let's just uh, try to see where we have our headings. So revenue is here. So it means we are going to uh, classify it under revenue. We have got sales. And going back uh, to the next one, we have got sales service rate. And over the service rate, again, we are going to receive uh, income, which is uh, also uh, part of our uh, revenue. So service rate also, uh, but uh, under revenue. Then we have to go to the next one. Then after that, we put interest on loan. So interest on loan, we are saying uh, this is uh, the uh, the cost that is incurred in uh, trying to acquire a uh, funds or money. So it becomes a finance cost. So we put interest on loan uh, being a finance cost. Finance cost under here. Then we move on to the next one. Then after that, we have uh, salary. Uh, salary for salary for sale representatives. So obviously, this becomes the uh, cost that is being incurred uh, during the transportation of uh, uh, of goods uh, from the manufacturer uh, to the end user. So uh, salary for sale representatives uh, become a distribution. Uh, we got a distribution cost. So uh, we classify it under that. So here we are saying salary for uh, sale. Salary of sale representatives. Let me check and try to see the next one. We have got our um, stationary. So you can see that stationary now is an administrative cost. Administrative cost. So we uh, classify it under administrative cost. Uh, administrative cost. So um, we go to the next one. Insurance also, uh, insurance becomes an administrative cost. Remember, we said that uh, uh, these are typically a fixed cost uh, that we have 
uh, that are paid uh, uh, from time to time. If, uh, if one is also uh, uh, being a fixed uh, a administrative cost. And after insurance, uh, we have got a telephone. So telephone also uh, is a, uh, when it's an administrative cost. Telephone uh, also becomes an administrative cost. So here we also have telephone. And uh, the next one is our royalties. Uh, in the royalties, uh, we know that uh, from the point of view that uh, we are the ones that are offering the royalties and becomes the revenue, so we can classify them under revenue. Remember revenue is here. Then after royalties, uh, we have got uh, advertising. Advertising again, uh, remember when we are, when we are advertising, uh, we are trying to uh, make our products uh, uh, be known and then we put uh, in the form of promoting our products. So it's part of our selling uh, and uh, also distribution, our uh, distributing our cost. So it becomes a distributing cost. So we can put it under distribution cost. Uh, we can put it under distribution cost whereby we are saying advertising. So uh, after advertising, we check what do we have. Uh, we have interest on bank overdraft. Remember, interest on bank overdraft is another uh, cost that we are carrying as we try to acquire funds. Uh, so uh, it also becomes yeah, uh, a finance cost. So we put it under finance cost. So uh, this is what we have. Uh, then uh, we check uh, there in our list to see that uh, this is the last item that we have. So uh, that's what we have on 2.3.1. Then 2.3.2, these are complete. Uh, which which financial statement is used to uh, complete the items in uh, question 2.3.1? Uh, which financial statement is used to complete the items in, in question 2.3.1? So uh, where, which financial statement do we uh, uh, include in these items that we have here? Uh, so basically, the items include the revenue, distribution cost, financial cost, and administrative cost. And we know that the financial statement that we have, we've got uh, the statement of comprehensive income, we've got the statement of financial position, also, uh, the statement of cash flow also is a financial statement. But uh, according to those three, we'll see that uh, the statement of comprehensive income is the most appropriate. So we are saying on 2.3.2, uh, 2.3.2, uh, statement. Of comprehensive income. So this is our two evidence of 2.3.2. Then we move on to the next question. And the next question is now 2.3.3, which are is write the framework of the financial statement mentioned in question 2.3.2. Uh, in full classifying the items by their function, use uses uh uses X X in the uh the space of amounts. And then there are so subtractions with brackets. So are very important. So the key uh, that we have there in terms of uh, what we should uh, show is that we are going to show our figures as x, x. We're not going to put real figures. We just put our x, x. And then when we are subtracting, uh, let's put our brackets. And that's uh, where, where it's important. So we've got a statement that we have here that we just need to fill in according to uh, that part of the question whereby we have got the statement of comprehensive, uh, statement of comprehensive income framework. So uh, with separate comprehensive income, uh, remember it starts with revenue. So we are just going to say uh, revenue. And obviously, we are going to put our XX. I mean, after revenue, obviously, we are going to subtract our cost of sales. Obviously, we say less uh, cost of sales. 
when, uh, when we let some of cells, we are representing as x, x, so we are saying, yeah, it's it's and then uh we subtract our cost of sales from whatever you need to get our gross profit. So uh we are just going to show it like that such and then uh, maybe we can uh, show by underlining and then uh the answer that we are going to get without some gross profit. Which is our XX again, and uh, it is our Our gross profit. Then after gross profit, uh, remember we we'll go to the other income section. We have say other. Uh, obviously, we add other income. And we put our x x. We are adding, so uh, we can just leave it like that. And then, uh, when we add uh, the figure that we are going to get there, uh, becomes your gross operating income. So we add it, and the figure that we get becomes. Um, because operating income. Then after that, that's where we do to subtract our expenses. Uh, so for expenses, we can start with our distribution cost. Uh, distribution. Cost. Then I will subtract them. So you can put brackets. And then we put administrative costs. Also, we subtract them. We have got our finance costs. Now uh, we put our finance costs. Obviously, we are supposed to subtract them. And we might have other expense, other costs or other expenses that might not be classified under the ones under distribution and missing with finance. Then you can just call them other costs. Then we also subtract them. And then the next figure that you're going to get is going to be the uh, uh, profit uh, before tax. So again, just underline. So we are saying here we have uh, XX. And we are saying this is now the profit. Profit before tax. So after some after now we put our text. Uh, we say now text spends or just taxation. And obviously we subtract text expense from figure for profit in the whole text. Now to get the figure for profit after tax. So uh, this becomes uh, your profit. After tax, we are using the profit after tax. But uh, the figure that we are going to get, or oh, we might have other comprehensive income that might we might have in the uh, present. So here we are saying we are supposed to add them, add other. Comprehensive income. So, uh, other comprehensive income typically can be a revaluation re 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 is a surplus as part of that revaluation. Re surplus, and then obviously we add it. I'll show you this a positive, and then we uh, add it to the figure for net profit after tax uh, to get the final figure, which is going to be the total comprehensive income. So, uh, this is the framework that we have uh, for statements for comprehensive income. So, um, let's say for more videos to come, let's subscribe and share. Let's share the link to our colleagues, what we find it to our continent. As for this video, I'm signing out. Let's meet again in the next video.